On a cold December day in 1947, two physicists crammed a couple of electrodes into a piece of germanium. They didn't know it then, but what they invented would change the world forever. The transistor is arguably the most important invention of the 20th century. The first one might not have been very pretty, but with it came the dawn of a new era. Just like cells are the building blocks of life, transistors are the building blocks of our modern electronics. These awesome things wouldn't exist as we know them without transistors. Now, what is a transistor? First, I'll give you a simple answer. It's a switch. Just like a light switch, it turns on and off. But unlike a light switch, it has no mechanical moving parts. This is possible through the magic of physics and chemistry. But we'll get into that later. And, little detail, it can switch up to 100 billion times in one second. It would take you about 2,000 years to flick a light switch on and off that many times. Transistors work something like a water faucet. Not only do they start and stop the flow of a current, but they also control the amount of the current. They can switch and amplify electrical signals, meaning that they can move electricity through a circuit board with extreme precision. That's why we can have such powerful devices in such small packages. Today's transistors are tiny. I mean, really, really ridiculously tiny. Think about the head of a pin. Pretty small, right? Well, you can fit over 100 million transistors on one. If you expanded each transistor in a smartphone to the size of an apple, then that smartphone would have to be larger than the entire Earth. Okay, let's back up. One of the first applications of transistors was to make smaller, more portable radios. Transistors made it possible to amplify sound in a smaller package, so people were able to take their music out into the world with them. Nowadays, billions of transistors work together to run the programs necessary to watch this video. The transistor radio only had four. Okay, so transistors can move electricity around, but how do they do it? Transistors are made from silicon, a chemical element found all over the Earth. Silicon is a semiconductor, meaning it conducts electricity better than an insulator like plastic, but not quite as well as metals like copper. However, you can make silicon more of a conductor by using a process called doping. You've probably heard of it before. It's when you inject a foreign substance in order to improve or inhibit performance. In this case, it's a really good thing. Here's a silicon atom. It has four electrons in its outer or valence shell, which bond each atom to its neighbors. When you inject other atoms into the lattice, the silicon starts to behave a little differently. If we dope silicon with the chemical element phosphorus, the silicon gains some extra electrons, so electrons flow out of it more easily. Silicon treated this way is called n-type. If we dope silicon with another element, like boron, the lattice will have missing electrons, or holes, so electrons in nearby materials will tend to flow into it. This sort of silicon is called p-type. By doping silicon with other elements, we now have two materials that we can put together to make transistors. Field effect transistors, or FETs, are electrical switches that are controlled by an applied electric field. These kinds of transistors have three major parts, the source, the gate, and the drain. Electric current flows through the transistor from the source to the drain. The gate controls whether the current can flow or not and is insulated by an oxide layer. Remember the water faucet analogy from earlier? The handle of the faucet is like the gate of the transistor, except instead of turning a knob, the application of a voltage controls the flow. The most common field effect transistors have ends of n-type material, separated by a small volume of p-type material. This separating layer is called the channel, and it is the region that will be switched on or off by the gate. When the n-type and p-type silicon are put next to each other, the free electrons from the n-type material flow into the p-type material to fill the holes. 
This creates a barrier called the depletion zone. In this state, the transistor is off. When a positive voltage is applied to the gate, it overcomes the depletion zone. Electrons are then allowed to flow from the source to the drain. In this state, the transistor is on. This design is remarkable because it can switch on and off ridiculously fast with no moving mechanical parts. One of the most recent transistor designs is called the FinFET, or fin-shaped field effect transistor. This kind of transistor places the source and the drain into a standing fin, and the gate electrode surrounds the channel for even more precise performance. The most recent FinFET transistors are only 14 nanometers wide. That's a few dozen atoms across. When a transistor turns on, it's a one in the computer language of binary. When it's off, it's a zero. Billions and billions of zeros and ones put together make up the programs and functions of our electronic devices. To compute these complex tasks, a group of transistors work together on an integrated circuit, better known as the computer chip. Microprocessors are among the most advanced integrated circuits, and they control everything from computers and smartphones to digital microwave ovens. The first integrated circuit was a little messy, but it changed the way transistors were put together. Soon, engineers were able to put more and more transistors together to compute as a unit. Originally, there were only a few transistors on an integrated circuit. A 64 gigabyte thumb drive today has over 100 billion circuit elements. A few years after those first computer chips were created, engineer and co-founder of Intel, Gordon Moore, predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double roughly every two years. This phenomenon turned out to be true, and Moore's law has held to this day. As a result, the cost of transistors continues to go down exponentially. If car prices fell at the same rate as transistors, a brand new car today would cost pennies. What if we reach the limit of Moore's law in our lifetime? Even today, transistors are so small that they become subject to issues like quantum tunneling, and things can get pretty weird. We may eventually have to abandon the traditional electrical transistor altogether. But that doesn't mean the end of smaller, more powerful computers. Some speculate that one day, scientists will be able to store memory in single atoms. Think about how small your smartphone will be then. In the almost 70 years since the invention of the first transistor, our world has completely changed. This teeny slab of silicon has influenced nearly every modern invention, industry, and home. The constant evolution of the transistor has dramatically transformed the human experience on Earth, and all with something millions of times smaller than the head of a pin.